Hey guys, how you doing? Welcome back. We are out today to do a uh, overnight bushcraft camp um, in a bit of woodland that I found uh, in East Devon. So uh, this is one of those campsites, you know, where you pay a couple of quid, you come in uh, and you can sleep in their woodland for the night. So uh, yeah, hope you enjoy. So the main issue that I've got in this bit of woodland is um, while it's very nice and very pretty, it's not very big, um, which isn't actually a massive problem, but the big thing is it is absolutely soaking wet. The ground is sodden everywhere. It's basically one big bog. Um, and for anyone that's watched any of my other videos, like in Dartmoor, I'm gonna go hiking and stuff. If there's a bog, I'm gonna find it and walk into it. So um, I'm just gonna have a scout around and try and find an area that is relatively, uh, relatively dry, at least to the point where I don't sink in it up to my ankles. So yeah. All right, so I found a spot that I think will work. I mean, it's still kind of very soggy, but it's kind of the best that I'm gonna get and it's relatively flat. Uh, so I'm gonna try and set up camp here. I'm basically gonna use this big tree here uh, and try and string across to maybe that tree over there to set up a, a ridge line for my tarp. Um, as you can see, I've got quite a lot of stuff with me in my pack. Uh, and if you can see these big orange bags over here, these are uh, bundles of wood um, that I got from, from the owner of this property. Um, Obviously, because you know this is this is their woodland, they don't necessarily want you chopping down trees randomly and stuff like that, um, which I understand completely. And as everything's soaking anyway, uh, it just made sense to buy some logs. So I know that that's not massively bushcrafty, but you got to do what you got to do, right? I want to fire tonight. I want to cook. I want to stay warm because it's going to get down to don't know roughly minus two degrees uh, centigrade, something like that. So I want to stay warm and I want to keep the fire going. So I've got two big bags of wood, which uh, obviously is dry and, and ready to burn. So um, so that's what that is. But yeah, so let's go on with it. Let's uh, set up our camp and um, start enjoying our time out here. Well, that took a while. Um, <laughs> I had to move my ridge line a bunch of times because I found that when I was pulling my tarp back, I was in all of the really, really wet bit um, just behind me. So that's taken far longer than it should have done. But camp is now finally set up. It's, um, it's by no means the best <laughs> camp spot I've ever had in terms of flatness, dryness, and how the tarp's done. But, you know, it's only for one night and it's not meant to rain. So I think we'll be absolutely fine. Um, yeah, so you may be wondering where I've been for a while, because if you have followed the channel um, for a little while or since it started, um, you'll know that I've been away from YouTube for just over a year, if not a bit longer. I mean, I did a very small video um, just over a year ago, basically explaining what I've been doing for the like eight months before that, that I hadn't, uh, <laughs> hadn't uploaded anything. So I don't think that really counts. So I've actually been away for a very long time. Um, and the, the main reason is I've just been busy. Um, I did an outdoor activity instructor apprenticeship. Um, you know, if you, as I say, if you watch my videos, you'll know that that's what I was doing. 
Um, but I completed that, so that lasted 14 months, uh, and it very much left me with, uh, with pretty much no time to do anything else, really. Um, but the other big thing that's happened um, in my life is that I've moved house. So um, I used to live in Surrey, um, and we've moved, me and my family have moved west. Never reached Red Week. Yeah, west. Um, we are now uh, in Devon, roughly. Um, so that, as you may imagine, has taken up um, a big, big part of my life as well. It, uh, it made me switch jobs numerous times um, because, you know, we had a buyer, then the buyer fell out, so we weren't moving where we thought we were. So I then was like, oh, I need money. I've got to get another job. So I've done a couple of, uh, I've been doing a couple of jobs uh, around. But uh, in November, as I say, in November, we moved to Devon. So I then spent obviously a couple of weeks, month or so, uh, getting settled into our new surroundings and, uh, and preparing for Christmas. Um, so yeah, that's essentially what I've been doing. I've been working um, a lot, probably overworking, which has left me very, very little time to do anything uh, kind of bushcrafty or, or YouTube related, which has been a shame. Um, I haven't done nothing. You know, I've been uh, camping a few times with, uh, with my friend Andy uh, and another friend Hannah. We went over Dartmoor. Uh, a few times and, and walked and camped and, and that kind of stuff. So um, I've been keeping my toe in, as it were, but I just, at the time, um, you know, I really didn't have the energy to carry the camera and the tripod um, and film everything. Um, I just wanted to be, you know, out there and, and enjoy it. So, so I didn't film any of it. Um, but yeah, that's essentially what I've been doing. I've been working uh, and moving house. Uh, but now all that's done. Um, not to say that the, the move is done, done. I'm gonna have to move house again um, at some point uh, within the next few months. So if I go quiet again, that you'll probably know that's why. Uh, it also means, of course, that I've got to find a new job. Um, so I had to leave the jobs that I was doing uh, in Surrey and I've got to find something else. I have uh, a couple of a couple of bits and pieces lined up, um, which I'm not gonna go into too much detail in, um, you know, just in case it doesn't come off. But I've got a job lined up with the possibility of, uh, of another one um, as well that may start sooner. So yeah, things are, things are in the pipe works. Hopefully, um, these jobs that I'm getting won't be quite as um, demanding in terms of my hours uh, and in terms of the you know the amount that I have to be there and, and the amount of time that I get to do to do this kind of stuff. Um, so I'm hoping, yeah, that I'll still be able to get out and make plenty of plenty of videos. Um, I have quite a few ideas um, of stuff that I would like to do uh, in terms of in terms of content creation. Um, if you had took a look at uh, took a lacquer, if you took a look at my last video, it was like um, an ASMR type deal. I don't know if that's something that I'm going to continue in, but it seemed like um, something that people might be interested. You know, part of the reason that I go out and camp is for the sound. You know, it's it's peaceful, it's it's, na it's natural, uh, and there's loads of different stuff you know that you hear throughout the night over over a camp. Whether it's animals, whether it's you know just the crackle of the fire, whether it's water running next to you, you know wind in the trees whatever it might be um you know rustle of wildlife and stuff there's so much to to hear and listen to and it, and it really really relaxes me so i um i think you know i might have a little venture into into some kind of quieter asmr type videos whether that's you know something like this um where i camp and i just don't talk um and you know you've got the visuals of me setting up camp and, and camping out but there's no interaction if you like with the camera it's just the sounds of nature and then kind of i'll Bill it or portray it as a as an ASMR type deal. Um, I don't know. You know, if, if that's something that you guys think you might like to see, um, you know, please do let me know. Uh, and if you think it's a terrible idea, also let me know. Um, if you think I should talk every you know every video, then you know, please do uh, please do let me know. Um, yeah, as I say, I've got other stuff that I want to do as well. Um, where I am at the moment, hopefully I've got a bit more access to things like the coast uh, and some more water based stuff. So. You know, hopefully I might be able to get out and do some more canoe trips, which is something that I really want to do. And uh, I don't know, maybe some stuff on the sea, like some, some stand up paddle boarding or something on, around the coast. You know, that might be quite fun to do. Um, you know, I, I just have to wait and see. I think one of the main things is I have to get settled in, in where I am. In, and once we've moved house again into our permanent location. So I don't know kind of when that, when that kind of really interesting content will come out. Um, but, you know, it's in the pipeworks. Um, but yeah, so part of, part of this camp, part of getting out tonight was just to kind of share with you guys kind of what I've been doing and, and also to get out and, uh, and do a proper camp because I haven't had one um, by myself at least for, for quite a while. So yeah, thank you very much. Welcome back uh, to the new kind of stage of Colo Craft. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun. I hope you stick along for the journey. And, uh, you know, if you like this stuff, make sure you share it with somebody else that might like it. Um, 
selfless plug. Yeah. Anyway, uh, yes, camp is set up. Back to back to actually what I'm doing. So camp is set up. Um, at some point, I need to get fire going. It's now about ten to three. So I arrived actually at about half past twelve. Uh, by the time I'd got into this little bit of woodland, found a space that didn't, you know, suck my ankles into a, into a bog and brought all the wood down that they gave me and stuff like that, uh, and get set up. That's taken a fair bit of time. Um, so yeah, now ten to three. So I'm going to have a little relax, a little wait uh, before I do anything else, and then I'm going to get a fire going. I've got um, some food. I've got a steak for dinner, um, so I'm going to cook that up as well. Um, yeah, and I'm just going to relax and enjoy it. So cheers. Sorry if you think I talk too much. Oh my word, that's nice. Well, the temperature's starting to drop and I'm getting hungry. Um, and I need to get my fire going and then let it burn down so that I can actually put my grill on and, um, and make my steak. So, just gonna get a fire going. Um, he says confidently. Um, obviously, I'm using the wood that uh, the company here um, have given me. So, that's great because it's really, uh, it's nice and dry. Uh, and all that kind of fun stuff but I need to split some of it down and to do that I need a nice sort of stable base uh, which is proving a little bit tricky but not impossible so just going to split some of these nice seasoned logs down uh, and get my fire going cook up some food I think we're just about set up here, so let's uh, give this a go. Let's hope we get a fire. seems to be a lot of moisture in this wood that they've given me. I don't know if that's because these bits I've had on the ground and it's sucked it up really quickly. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of water coming out of these bits that I've split up and put on the fire. So I'm hoping, particularly the second bag will be nice and dry because 
giving off a lot of smoke and not a huge amount of heat at the moment, which um, is a bit disappointing, but <laughs> we'll persevere. Alright, so it's about five o'clock now and I'm getting hungry, so I'm going to um, start getting my dinner on. Uh, the fire's been going for a while. Uh, it's still not burned down enough really to get the steak on, but it has, I hope, burned down enough to get the rest on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make something um, that is apparently widely known as like um, hobo potatoes. So essentially all I'm going to do is chop up these potatoes and an onion, wrap them in some foil, hopefully my onion... Whee! Stay. Stay. Ah. I'm going to chop up the onions, uh, the onion and potatoes, um, and wrap them in tin foil with a bit of oil and seasoning, and basically put them straight in the fire. Uh, they're going to take 40 odd minutes to cook. Uh, hopefully by then the fire will have died down enough so that I can um, get my steak on as well. So yeah, I'm going to move that for a moment. I'm just going to chop up these potatoes. Nothing fancy. Literally just slicey, slicey. So the chopping board that I'm using uh, is actually the back of my backpack, my Hidden Woodsman Forest Rock, uh, which I think is really cool that there's a piece of plastic in there to give it some stability. It also works quite handily as a chopping board. I wouldn't really want to do this all the time because obviously I don't want to scar the back of my um, backpack too much, but for the sake of this, you know what, <sighs> we'll deal with it. Going to chop these potatoes up relatively small. I've never done this before, so <laughs> I'm hoping that it works out. I uh, I wash them at home. Um, I'm not going to bother trying to peel them or anything because, well, seems like a lot of effort. <coughs> oh, bit of mud there. Nice. A bit of woodland floor makes everything taste good. Yeah, there's another big one there. Chop that up chop you up a bit. Right, okay. So, uh, onion. Again, just going to chop them up. Don't want the skin particularly. Let's get that off there. Cut my nails this morning <laughs> and they're really short now. I feel onion getting in there and stinging, which is really fun. So let's just chop them up a little bit. There we go, that'll do. Nothing crazy. Okay, that'll do. Wipe that off. So what I have here is two sheets of tin foil. I believe you're supposed to do this shiny side up, but honestly, I have no idea. Um, but I'm sure it'll work out fine either way. So I'm just going to shove all of them in there. Get that back under there. I should have got some bigger... Ooh, that was an owl. That was cool. Hopefully you heard that on the camera. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to ruffle them all up like that. Um, I don't know if actually my piece of foil is big enough, but I guess we'll find out. So in here, all I have, ow, short nails, uh, is a bit of oil. So I'm just going to pour a bit of oil on there. And in this pot, I've got a bit of seasoning. So in here, I've just got salt, pepper, uh, what else is in here? A um, bit of garlic powder and thyme, I think. I can't remember if I did any oregano. But there we go. I'm going to save a bit of that for the steak as well. So, pop that there. Mix it all up really nicely. Squish them up a bit. And then basically what I now do, I think, is now that my hands are covered in oil, wipe them off on the trousers, nice and clean, uh, is I think I just fold them up, make like a little packet, Basically just like that, squash it down, and I basically shove it straight in the fire. And BAM!
Oh yeah, hobo potatoes and steak. Looks pretty good to me. All right, let's try one of these potatoes. Mm. Wow, you can really taste the um, really taste the fire smoke in them. Let's try these onions. Oh, that's so good. I mean, I do not profess to be a chef of any kind whatsoever, but you know what? Simplest way of cooking food. Ah. Often, often the best. Right. Time for some steak. Now, I feel like I might have overdone this steak to the point where it is completely and utterly knackered. But, meat's meat. Yeah, I have. Unfortunately, I have burnt this. Mmm. Unfortunately, ruined. But, you know what? It's beef, you know? Sirloin steak, so it still tastes good. But, unfortunately, it is way over what I like it. Mm. I like my steaks rare, medium rare at a push. Um, I mean, I, to, I, I do like the char on the outside that you get from cooking on the fire, but no, I left it on for way too long. So unfortunately, to any chef people watching, Irish in particular, I'm sorry, but um, yeah, knackered it. But, <laughs> you know what? Still tastes pretty good. And I'll tell you what, the hobo potatoes, I'm really impressed with. They're actually really, really tasty. So, hmm. yeah. Uh, I realised that, um, well, I don't even know if you can see me right now, you probably can't, uh, and there's a lot of <laughs> smoke coming off the fire which I'm trying to build up again, which is probably going straight in the camera lens, so I'm going to eat this, um, and then I'll get back with you, let you know what I'm doing afterwards, I'm, I mean in all honesty I'm probably just going to go to bed, but mm, I should forget, I should forget, I should mention, because I forgot, on top of the uh, hobo potatoes and the steak. The only thing that can make it any better, the gentleman's essentials hip flask full of Highland Park Viking edition. Is there a better whiskey? So it turns out if you're not careful, making hobo potatoes can burn a hole in your plastic bit that goes in the back of your rucksack. <sighs> Man, that's annoying. Now, ah, well.